All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to build out all of the quadrants of the unit circle. Now I mentioned, I really just want you to focus on knowing the first quadrant of the unit circle. However, what I want you to be able to see is if you know the first quadrant of the unit circle, actually building out the rest of the quadrants is really not that bad. So let's just kind of do a quick review of the quadrants because if you know the quadrants, then you're going to be pretty, um, pretty on your way to understanding what we're really doing just to build out the rest of the unit circle. So if we think about this, we have the X and the Y axis, right? Now we have quadrant number one, and that was the one that I said we want to focus on that. Now the reason why quadrant number one is um, the most important one to understand is, well, because any coordinate in the first quadrant, we know X, Y is going to be positive. Now, as we flip over to quadrant two, which is a reflection about the Y axis, now our X coordinates are all going to be negative and our Y coordinates are all going to be positive. Again, this is really, really important stuff. We're going to want to make sure that we remember, even though you might think, well, quadrants, that was like, you know, algebra or pre-algebra stuff, but it's all coming now back to our understanding of the unit circle. Then we go ahead and reflect that across the X axis and we go into quadrant number three. Now quadrant number three, we have negative X coordinates as well as negative Y coordinates. And then we again flip that back over across the Y axis and we're in now quadrant number four. And here our X coordinates are going to be positive and our Y coordinates are going to be negative. All right, now before we get into the rest of the quadrants, I think it's really important to really identify also the four coordinate points that in addition to the first quadrant you need to know, um, you need to know these four coordinate points. And these are gonna become really, really important also once we get into graphing. And that'll come into the end of this series of videos. So let's go and take a look here at the coordinate points here. Now we know that we built out our first quadrant and we know that those points all lied on a circle, right? Because they all, all the triangles that we did all had a radius of one. And so we continued out that triangle. And what's important about this is all these little x-intercepts. Again, these are really, really easy to remember because if you know that the distance from the origin to these points or to any point on the unit circle is going to be one, then you know that, well, all right, if I'm going in the positive direction, this is going to have a coordinate point, one comma zero. This one is going to be zero comma one. Over here is going to be a negative one comma zero. And down over here, it's going to be a zero comma negative one. All right, now the goal of this video is for me to be able to build out all of the points of the unit circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a big unit circle and I want to be able to identify all of these points. All right, so we're going to create a nice big circle. My circle, eh, not too bad. First quadrant, I kind of messed up a little bit. And hopefully you remember on this first quadrant, we know these points, right? Or at least hopefully we're going to know these points because after you go through these videos and you start going working through any problems these are the problem these are the corner points that i'm going to want you to remember so we should already know these um points or these are the ones that we're going to make sure that we memorize in this case so that's going to be square root of three or two comma one half this one's going to be square root of two over two comma square root of two over two and this one's going to be a one half comma square root of three over two and this one's going to be a zero comma one okay so let's go and build out the rest of these points and it's actually a lot simpler than you might imagine. And no, ladies and gentlemen, as I've said before, I do not want you to memorize these points. I want you to memorize the first quadrant and memorize the four points of the intercepts, but that's it. You don't need to memorize these points because in, um, in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna show you how to memorize the unit circle as well as how to use it. So you don't have to rely on memory of all the points, but you can just do something very quickly as long as you have an initial understanding of what you're trying to do and what information you have. So let's go and take a look at um, how we're going to create those rest of those quadrants. And it really kind of comes into looking into reflections and our triangles. So I'm going to start off with this 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here is going to be my triangle. Remember it was a right triangle over here. And we had this point, um, which was a one half and we had square root of three over two. Right, so that so the distance from here to here was I'm sorry that that is incorrect. I flipped them around, so let's go ahead and delete those, <laughs> and I'm not going to edit that out because guess what? That is one of the more common mistakes that students will make, and I've made this mistake tons of times, guys. Because what happens is we just we we confuse 
the 30 degree angle and the 60 degree angle. It's so easy to do. So just be careful. And again, the more practice you get with this, the easier it is to kind of catch your mistakes. Um, but we want to know that the distance from here to here is square root of three over two. Up here is one half, and that's how we got this coordinate point, square root of three over two, comma, one half. Okay, so let's just go and play a game with reflections. Now, again, we know that this is going to be 30 degrees, all right? So if I take this triangle and I reflect it about the y-axis, this new triangle is now going to look something like this. Got there, and we got there, okay? So we'll try to do it the best we can. It looks something like that. Now, again, let's kind of go through these coordinate points. Well, again, all I did was I took the exact same triangle and reflected it. So the values are exactly the same. However, this is now in the second quadrant. So this is going to be a negative square root of three over two, but my Y value is still positive, right? So that's still a positive one half. So therefore this coordinate point is now going to be a negative square root of three over two comma one half. Now let's take this exact same triangle and again, flip it over the X axis. We're just playing a game of reflections. Remember that geometry class and you're like, why are we doing these reflections? Like this is easy or this is boring or whatever else. Well, it all builds into your understanding of, of what we're doing exactly right now. And yeah, so let's just go and build this out. So we know again, that X distance is a negative square root of three over two. And my Y value though is now going down. So that's going to be a negative one half again, the distance is all exactly the same because we're just reflecting the exact same triangle. So this coordinate point is a negative square root of three over two, comma, negative one half. And then last but not least, if you reflect this back over, let's go and do another color. We'll do dark blue. That's gonna be over here. And I think you can probably start seeing the pattern, ladies and gentlemen. And that's really all I want you to see is this pattern, square root of three over two, and then this is going to be a negative one half. So therefore this coordinate point is square root of three over two comma negative one half. So if you notice for these reflections or for these triangles, they all, the values are all exactly the same, right? The values are all exactly the same. It just depends on which quadrant you're dealing with. Now let's get into the good stuff because what also do they all share in common? They all share the same values, just plus or minus, but there's something else they share in common. And we're going to talk about this later, but for right now, I'll kind of, bring it, uh, I'll just kind of, I won't, I won't go into the definitions, but they all focus. They all have the same angle with the X axis, 30 degrees, right? They're all 30 degrees off of the X axis. So that's very important because if I want to be able to represent like, yeah, you could say that's 30 degrees, but another way I could look at this is the distance from this X axis to this line is you could say, well, that's 30 degrees. Then that means this has to be 150 degrees. The distance from this X axis to that line is we know is 30 degrees above 180, right? Because we know all, you know, a straight line is going to be 180 degrees. So if we're doing 30 degrees plus, then that's going to be 210 degrees. And then over here, you can see, well, all the way around would be 360, right? That makes a circle. But again, we're 30 degrees short. So that would be a 330 degrees. So let's go ahead and build these out or now add them into our unit circle that we had down below. So you can see we have this point, right? Which we represented as a 30 degrees. Then over here, we're not gonna use the 30 degrees because one thing we'll talk about in the future later videos is we're all considering when we're looking at the angles, we're actually, instead of always doing them with the X axis, we're only going to be considering, we're only going to be worried about what is the, what is the angle in reference from the positive version of the X axis. So when I label this as 150 degrees, what I'm talking about is the rotation from this X axis to here. Okay. So that's what we're important about. That's what, when I'm talking about 150 degrees. Um, so I will go ahead and write 150 degrees here. And then again, this coordinate point we know is a negative square root of three over two comma one half. This angle, which again was that reflection, again, 30 degrees, which would be a 210 degrees, is a negative square root of three over two, comma, negative one half. And then we have this angle over here, which was represented 330 degrees. And again, this is a rotation from this positive X axis. And that has a coordinate point of square root of three over two, comma, negative one half. All right, let's go and do the next couple angles. I'm not gonna go through them as slowly though, because if you recognize 
the pattern that I just outlined, you see, it's like, okay, well, we can just basically replicate this for all of the triangles that we developed in that quadrant number one. So let's do the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And again, remember, this one has a side length of, or this has a coordinate point of square root of two over two, comma, negative square root of two over two. So when we reflect the triangle, again, the distance or the angle with the x-axis is going to be the same. So that's 45 degrees, right? This is going to be another reflection. And you're going to have another reflection over here. So not the best triangles. Apologies. Um, but if we reflect about the x-axis, then we know this one is a negative square root of 2 over 2, comma positive square root of 2 over 2. This one, we know that both terms are going to be negative. So that's a negative square root of 2 over 2 comma negative, square root of two over two. And this one is going to be a square root of two over two, comma negative, square root of two over two. All right, so again, if we know that this is 45 degrees though, that's really important. So if that's 45 degrees, again, when we're looking in for what is this angle, well, this is 45 degrees short of 180. So that's actually gonna be 135 degrees. This angle is 45 degrees more than 180. So therefore, that is going to be a 225 degrees. And then this last angle represent over here is going to be 45 degrees less than 360. That's going to be a 315 degrees. So let's go ahead and add these in there. So we have this angle, right? That represents our 45 degrees. We have this angle, which is going to represent our 130 degrees, or I'm sorry, 135 degrees. And that point is a negative square root of two over two, comma, square root of two over two. Over here, this one was, what was it? It was 225 degrees. And also, the re I think what's really important about going through this is like, you're going to have a sense, or hopefully like a remembrance of like these numbers, because these numbers show up a lot. Like you're not going to be dealing with a lot of 215 or 217, right? You're going to see this relationship because everything's really added and subtract. It's all multiples of 30, 45, and 60. So this point is negative square root of two over two, comma, negative square root of two over two. And then this point over here is going to be 315 degrees. And that point is going to be uh, a positive square root of two over two, comma, negative square root of two over two. All right, last but not least, is we got our 60 degrees. And I kind of didn't give leave myself enough room for that. So my apologies, I thought I was trying to go farther down, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Okay, so again, we have our 60 degree angle. So again, that's 60 degrees. The coordinate point here is going to be a positive one half square root of three over two. And again, if we just build this out, just do a nice little reflection here. We have that point, which is going to be 60 degrees less than 180, which would be a 120. Actually, I'll build that out. So let's go and do the quadrants here. So this one would be negative 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. Then we reflect it down. And you know we're now going to be dealing with our negative values. So that's a negative 1 half, comma, negative, square root of 3 over 2. And then we build this one out over here. And that coordinate point is going to be a negative one half, comma, neg or sorry, positive. See, I'm starting to go a little wonky, so I apologize for that. That's in the positive direction. So we know the x coordinate is going to be a positive, but this is going to be a negative square root of three over two. Okay, I don't want that to uh, branch onto my unit circle. Um, but I'm going to use blue here to represent these. So this one is going to represent over. So we know that's a negative one half. Come on, negative one half positive square root of three over two. And again, what is this angle? Well, if this is 60 degrees here, we're 60 degrees short of 180. So therefore this angle is gonna represent 120 degrees. So that would be, so for this angle, we're going to be looking at 120 degrees. So 120 degrees. Then we go down to this reflection over here. And we know that that point is a negative one half negative square root of three over two. And you can see that's 60 degrees more than 180. So therefore that's going to be a 240 degrees. Then we reflect over here. 
And you can see that this point is positive one half square root of three over two. I'm sorry, negative square root of three over two, right? All these y values are all gonna be negative. All the x values are gonna be positive. That's 60 degrees short of 300, 360. So therefore that's 300 degrees. I, for whatever reason, skipped the first quadrant, but we know that this represents a 60 degree angle. And again, we're gonna talk more in depthly about these numbers, but again, these are all representing the angle of rotation from this X positive X axis right here. So as we're rotating this way, these would be your angles. And one thing I did not add would be our angles with our intercepts. So again, this is 90 degrees. This represents 180 degrees. This one is 270 degrees. Why didn't I fill in those points? That's negative one zero. And this one is zero comma negative one. And then all the way around, you could think of this as zero degrees, or if you rotate all the way around, you could also think about it as 360 degrees. That's kind of really important as that's working through there. So ladies and gentlemen, this is all of the unit circle in all of its glory. And what I have for you is some practice for you to be able to work on filling out these values on the unit circle. Even though I don't want you to memorize it, I think it's really, really important to make sure you feel comfortable with this because guess what? Everything we've talked about in this course so far has been all about degrees. But in reality, I don't like using degrees. I actually much prefer radians. So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in the next video. I'll see you there.